When I was um, an eighth grader, about to be a ninth grader, I, uh, I had the opportunity to play on the, the varsity football team, and I had looked forward to it my entire life. And I was so excited for it. And my brother, one of my brothers was gonna be a senior, and I was so excited. And before the season started, when I'm finishing my eighth grade year, about to start my freshman year, I'm so excited. And our football team goes to something called the Burley Man Retreat. I mean, can you be more meathead? I think not. But we go to this Burley Man Retreat, and you compete against all these other teams and all these Burley Man things, chopping wood and tug of war and just all these different things. And it was, it was so much fun to be a part of because I had looked forward to this my whole life. I get to, I get to be on the varsity team. And, and they're counting on me, and we're doing all of these different uh, competitions. And then the last night, there's this huge arena similar to this. And they said, okay, we want everybody to listen up. One person from every team, your team selects him. You come up here, and there's a, a curling bar with 10 pounds on each side. And one of you is gonna do the most and represent your team and each team picked that person, and you come up here and stand in line in front of everybody, you're gonna do the, this curling contest. And I was an eighth grader, about to be a ninth grader, and they're all looking around who they're gonna pick, and then they turn and they pick me. And I was like, what, no, pick a senior. I'm an eighth grader, you pick, pick someone else. No, I don't want that pressure. But a team picked me, and so I was like, oh no. But as a competitor, I literally walked to the back of the room because Listen, if you want to know what you have to beat, you literally go to the back, so you're the last one to go. And so I literally start walking to the side so I can be the very last one to go, except there was a, another guy who was a defensive tackle at a 6A high school standing at the back of the room folding his arms like this. And, and I knew him, and I knew that he was bigger, and he was stronger, and it wasn't even close. And I was like, oh shoot, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this guy that's standing behind me is better than me. He's just, he's better than me. There's no doubt about it. I know it. Most people know it. As though as a competitor, you're so disappointed. I know this guy's stronger than me. I know he's better than me. And so as everyone starts to go, I know what they've done. I'm like, I can beat all these guys. But I know the guy behind me is better than me. And so I get up there and I get to where they say go and I pick up the bar and it's literally as many times from your thighs to your shoulder as possible. Really no rules, it's just literally as many ways as you can get up as possible. And so I start going and I think the leader at the time was like 60 or 70 reps or something. And so I'm able to surpass that and I get to 100 and I get to 200 and I see my team and my teammates who I look up to and I've longed to be a part of and I love so much. And I see my brother cheering who I, I, want, to, I, I want to make him proud. I, I want him to be proud that I'm his younger brother. I want them to be proud that they picked me. I want my team to be proud that, that I'm representing them. And, and I'm filled with so much, not just encouragement, but inspiration. I'm filled with the urge, like, I have to do whatever I can. You see, I wasn't as gifted at that time as the guy behind me. But the question wasn't, was I more gifted? The question, honestly, was I more willing? And so I did as many as I could, past 200, past 250, I got to 300 got to 305, got to 310, and I got to 315, and I, I, I get in a full upper body cramp, and I literally, the, like the doctors come in, and I actually did a lot of damage to both my arms, and they literally took me off um, to go see all the nurses and the doctors, and I actually um, did a lot of damage to my arm, and maybe that's why my throwing motion was so weird, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's funny? Yeah, let's talk about your weaknesses, all right? And I was, I was so inspired because what I was representing meant so much to me that it was worth damage, it was worth tears, it was worth pain, it was worth hurting because what I was representing wasn't just myself. 
It wasn't a stupid burly man retreat where I'm doing curls because to me, it had nothing to do with the action. It had everything to do with the representation. Who was really standing up there? Not just me. It was my teammates. It was my school. It was the coaches. It was my brother. It was my family. What was I representing? There's no chance if I'm up there representing myself, I even come close to that number. No chance. But I was filled with an urge to do something, and it was to do more. And you see, the biggest question was, was I willing to endure more pain than the next guy? So I, didn't e I wasn't even there. They had taken me, and they were giving me IVs and everything else, so I'm gone. And my teammates tell me the story, so the next guy comes up, grabs the bar. He does enough to be second. He sets it down. He puts his foot over the bar, and he goes, ah. It ain't worth it. And he walks off the stage. And you know what? To him, it wasn't. To me, it was. But what do you think his team thought that year in the fourth quarter? Oh, is it also not going to be worth it? What do you think his team was like, dang, man, I'm so proud that I'm your teammate. It ain't worth it. I would ask you a question. How willing are you and how worth it is it to you? Everybody talks about the will to win and I can't stand the phrase. Everybody wants to win. That should never be your question. The question is, what are you willing to do? How hard are you willing to embrace the grind? How hard are you willing to embrace the suck? That's the question. Not do you want to win, everybody's going to say yes. But what's going to motivate you to get it done? And all of us have different whys that are going to motivate us. But the question is, is your big enough to be willing to say? When it gets hard, when I have to endure, I'm going to be willing. See, I think you have to have an, a vision. I think you have to be willing. Then I think you have to have non-negotiables. You have to have guardrails. To really make an impact, you have to have guardrails because if not, it's so easy to have mission drift. Where you drift away from what you set, actually set out to do. You see, for us, that. For me and my life and me and my wife and for our nonprofit, we have five non-negotiables that are for us, our guardrails, right? And I think non-negotiables are so important. What are the things that you are not willing to negotiate on? Because also when you make them, then your team's going to understand who you are, not just what you do, not just where you're going, that's your vision, but who you are, which ultimately when people buy into you, man, if all they buy into is your vision, if all they buy into is your what, you're leaving them somewhat empty. Because they need to buy into who you are. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. There's a lot of agents out there, man, that they wanna sell with a phone. I think a lot of you, a lot listening, you would love to do that. And, but they just struggle to do it. They're like, I don't have the perfect script. I don't know what to say when they want me to mail them stuff. Or I've always done face-to-face -face sales, and so this.